Hello, everyone. This is Kayla Priest here again. Thank you so much for joining me today for our script workout webinar. If you've never joined us before, we host this every other Monday. So while we'll be off the next Monday, we'll be back every other Monday. So you can always have a place to come and get your questions answered in terms of conversion, whether that's a scripting question, an objection question, did I say the right thing? Um, you know, how can I set more appointments? This is kind of a time where we can all meet together and figure out, um, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing my best practices? Um, or also for you to share two things with me that are working really well for you that you wish you had known earlier. <laughs> we all learn better when we're sharing what's working for us. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in and just kind of crowdsource really quickly what it is that you were hoping to learn today. Um, what will happen if you can just open up the chat or the Q&A section, again, whichever you see first, and want to let me know what you joined today hoping to take away from it. Is it an objection that you had a hard time handling? Please send that through in the chat or the Q&A section. I'm opening them up right now. Um, is it a question that really stumped you the other day? Is it um, something that's really working for you that you want to share with someone else? Whatever you are hoping to take away or add to today's uh, webinar, I'd love to make a quick little agenda for us um, and just make sure that everyone leaves today's webinar having their question answered, their objection work done, um, or whatever it is that you are hoping to learn for today. Um, so go ahead and take just a couple of minutes and let me know those specifics. It helps me really focus what we're talking about on exactly what you wanted to focus on and take away and nothing else. So we make sure this is a really productive hour together. Uh, Any time today that you do have questions pop up, you can add them in the Q&A in the chat as well. This is not the only time for questions. You can add them whenever we get there. Now, I also want to know if there is anyone who came um, to today's webinar hoping to do a live role play. So if you came to today's webinar saying, I want Kayla to take me off of mute <laughs> and do a role play, um, I want you to type in a quick, I want to role play into the chat or the Q&A section. And that way I will know who to call on when we get to that part of today's call. So if you want to role play, put in there, I want to role play. And I will see that and know that it is time <laughs> to call on you guys. So I'm just gonna make a quick note of anyone who says they wanna role play. And again, keep sending in those objections that you want some help in how to handle. If you wanna do some more with in terms of setting appointments, um, go ahead and let me know here. And I see, see some um, things starting to come in. So if you will bear with me for just a moment as I kind of make a quick list that I can follow along with during the webinar. The more you guys put in here, the better today's webinar will be. Is this anyone's first uh, conversion webinar? I'm also curious to know if you're joining us for the first time. Awesome, I see we've got a couple people joining us for the first time, welcome. I'm seeing a lot about actually getting um, the lead to say that they will meet with you. So getting a meeting scheduled, setting an appointment. That might look like it's gonna be a little bit of our focus today. I love that. A lot of times we practice our opening line over and over again, but we don't role play or practice actually setting the appointment. Okay, thank you guys for bearing with that bit of silence <laughs> as I made um, as I made our quick little list here. So I actually just have a list that I made of everyone who said they wanted to um, to role play. 
and also um, some objections that were sent through and those things that you are looking to get answered today. So I'm actually just going to go through these one by one. I might jump around a little bit, um, but I'll just be crossing them off on my list. And by the end of our time at four o'clock Eastern in about 50 minutes, we'll have all of these answered. So thank you for um, sending all of those in. I appreciate it. Now, I do have a couple people who say this is their first time here. I'm just learning. I'm new to sync, really looking for how to answer that first call. So let's go ahead and start at the very beginning. This may be like um, a refresher for some of you if you've joined me before. It may be something that you feel like you don't really need to focus on, but I'll guarantee you if you practice role play and you're not practicing from that first phone call and the first time the lead answers the phone, you're doing yourself a disservice. So even if you feel like you've really got this down, let's go ahead and talk through this so it's a refresher for you and brand new good information for everyone who's looking on how to strengthen that first phone call. So this is our sync approved opening line. You may have been taught something different. I'm not saying that this is the only opening line that you can use, but I am telling you that this is the one that we know for a fact works. And how do we know that? It's because we've been around for several years and we've talked to very successful agents and very successful teams that are using this opening line and they have been successful in setting appointments after opening calls with this. We also know that this is a successful opening line because it cuts down on a lot of objections. Sometimes we don't realize it, but when we use certain other opening lines, what can happen is it actually sets the lead up to give us one of those objections. It sets them up to say, oh, I'm already working with an agent or, oh, I'm no longer looking or whatever that objection may be. But what we do in this opening line is we ask them a question other than how can I help you or have you found anything that you like so far or anything else. So this is our preferred opening line. We're going to have great tonality. I cannot stress enough how important it is to sound like you care about being on the phone, sound interested in that person. We're going to have energy. So if you are like me and you can sometimes slip into a little bit more of a monotone voice, you need to get ready to make your phone calls by standing up. If that helps you have more energy, listening to a really great um, soundtrack <laughs> or playlist with some kind of getting you um, pumped up music. Maybe you watch a video that really gets you motivated. Maybe you write down your goals when you say well, these appointments that I set and the commission that I'm going to earn, this is what I'm going to do with that money. Make it personal. I'm going to, you know, help my kid buy um, some new cleats for their sports team. I'm going to pay for my family to go on vacation. I'm going to do that continuing education class I wanted to do. However you get the most motivated, if you, again, have the tendency to get nervous um, or slip in again like me into that monotone voice, make sure that you get your energy up and that your tonality is on point because you're going to have to sound a little different on the phone versus when you're just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a friend. So this is our opening line right here. The phone rings, the lead answers, hello, and we are going to say, hi, this is Kayla from the Home Search site. I saw you were looking at homes in Atlanta. Are you looking to move the next three to six months or are you just browsing? And you're going to fill in agent name with your own name. You're going to fill in city with whatever city that lead was looking in. And this is all you need to know before you make that call is what city they were looking in. And then we're asking, are you looking to move in the next three, three to six months or are you just browsing. Now at this point, if I'm doing this presentation in person, I normally get some funny looks and people saying, well, why do I want to ask if they're just browsing? I hate when a lead tells me that they're just looking. And what we do that for is to kind of put them on less of the defensive side. When we ask, hey, are you just browsing or are you just looking right now? What it does is it makes them feel like that's no longer an objection they can use and actually just a state of being, right? Hey, I'm telling you, lead, it's okay if you're just looking. I'm going to give you that as an option for something for you to say. So nine times out of 10, you're going to get someone that says, yeah, I am just browsing or I am just looking right now. If you do happen to get someone that says, well, I do want to move in the next six months. Awesome. How's your situation changing over the next six months? 
That's our follow-up question. For someone that says they're just browsing, perfect. I'd love for you to continue to use the site to browse. I'm curious though, what prompted you to look at this time? And we're asking what kind of brought them to the decision to start um, their home search. There's a ton of different questions you can follow up with. That's one of my favorites. Um, yes, I'm just browsing right now. Awesome, I'd love for you to continue to use the site to look. I'm curious, what exactly are you looking for? And we're asking open-ended questions to really open up that conversation. From there, we're gonna ask a lot of questions about their motivation, about what they're looking for, about when they're looking to buy. What this opening line does is it sets you up for the ability to answer our three W's. And you guys should write this down. You should not consider someone as being contacted until they have answered our three W's. What they're looking for, when they're looking to move, and the biggest one, why? Why are they looking to move? What's their motivation? Is it because they need to be in a new school district before their you know, youngest child starts elementary school? Is it that their parents are getting older and moving in with them? Is it because they um, just got a new job and they're finally in the position to buy their first home? So they're gonna stop renting. It's our job not only to be a quote unquote order taker and just know, okay, you're looking for a three bed, two bath in this certain school district for this certain price point, okay, nice to meet you. It's to understand why you're looking for three bedrooms and not four or not two. Why are you looking in that certain school district? Why is that your price point? Why now? So we're gonna ask a lot of open-ended questions. Now, I have some questions in here from you guys about um, some objections. So let's go ahead and talk about some of those. So one of them is someone saying, I already bought a house. So that's an objection that I think you hear a little less frequently, um, but can really go one of two ways. So if you've ever heard this and you're kind of either A, looking for some ways to deal with this, we'll talk through that as well. If you hear this a lot and you feel like you have a great way to handle this and you want to share that with the rest of us, as always, I love for us to share <laughs> and be kind of teachers with each other. Um, here's my thoughts on it. So you call someone and they say, oh, well, I already bought a home. We've got two things we can do because we're thinking, I called you because you registered on my site, <laughs> right? I'm not just cold calling you. So you actually registered, you know, because you wanted to see some homes. And then possibly they're even very active on your site still looking at homes. So again, I want to just ask a lot of open-ended questions. So if someone, I hear someone say, well, you know, no thanks, I already bought a home. Oh, that's so exciting. Congratulations. Where did you buy? And we're going to find out, hopefully, what neighborhood they bought in. It's all in how we come back to it. If we don't sound like we're actually interested in that information, they probably won't give it to us. But we also um, can go ahead and um, dig in a little deeper. So if we're asking them what, um, you know, neighborhood they bought in, um, if we're asking them, then are they interested in um, home valuation emails? So, okay, so you may be interested in finding out the value of your current home. Are you currently getting valuation emails or is that something you'd like to get set up on? So we're asking those questions to figure out what their, again, their motivation is. So why are they not, um, you know, why, excuse not, why are they not, why are they on your website looking for valuations if they um, currently bought? So we just have to do a little bit of digging. So the other thing is they may be using that as a, um, a lie. <laughs> and I don't really like to use the word lie, but here we are. So, um, if someone says that they just bought a house, but they're currently on your site looking, why is that? And then we just kind of have to say to ourselves, they're here for a reason, let me find out. Oh, that's so great that you already bought a house. 
Um, are you interested in other houses in the neighborhood? Maybe they're like in an investor situation or looking for a friend. Um, are you interested in, in any other houses in the neighborhood or are you happy where you are is a way to turn that into an A, B question instead of a yes or no question. So it really just depends on kind of what direction you want to go. But I'd say my first thought would be to say, oh, congratulations. That's so exciting. What neighborhood did you buy in? And go from there. So if then they say, well, we bought in the Castleberry Hill neighborhoods. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. And what's your house like there? And we're going to get them to tell us a little bit and then we can kind of find out from there what direction to go in. I'll kind of throw out a caveat and something that you maybe haven't heard on other scripting or conversion um, webinars or trainings before is that I don't believe in a quote unquote script like a line by line script right? What I believe in is treating this as a conversation. Um, I believe in treating this as someone um, that you're kind of trying to get to know as a friend. So what would you say to a friend who um, kind of had that line for you? Um, there's no right or wrong thing to say. It's all in keeping the conversation flowing by again being interested in them, asking lots of questions. So you'll never hear me say, oh, that worked, but that was the wrong thing to say because I want you just to get comfortable and being really conversational, having that good tonality, being interested and keeping that conversation flowing by asking lots of questions. However you get there, as long as you get there, it's okay. <laughs> so don't think that if you, you know, change some words around or it doesn't really sound natural to you, so you kind of flip it around a little bit, um, you just kind of have to figure that out um, for you, what sounds best, kind of what sounds natural to you. Talk to that person as if they're a friend and really do some digging to find out why they're on your site if they are, um, you know, have already bought. The last thing I'll say on that is it may be they truly have already bought. And at that case, it's still okay to stay in touch with that person because situations change every day. They may need to sell sooner than they anticipated. They may be helping for a friend or a family member look. So you never know if you could get a referral from just being really kind and treating them well and saying, you know, I'd love to send you valuations on your home and just keep you updated on, you know, homes for sale in your neighborhood. Staying in touch and keeping friendly with someone is a really good way to kind of turn that objection or that kind of truth that takes them out of our pipeline at the moment and just creates kind of a lifelong client out of them. So Carrie just shared, when you have a great conversation with a potential um, list but not quite ready to do so, we agree to talk again at a specified time in the future, but when you call them, they already have listed with someone else. So this was kind of one of those things where there's no magic pill for follow-up. But I'd ask um, Gary Ann, when you're following up with that person in the specified time, how far in the future was that? So if this is about something specific, how far in the future did you um, kind of say that you were gonna follow up? So just make sure everyone's on the same page. This is someone that Gary Ann had set a follow-up um, time with when she called on that specified date they had already listed with someone else. There's again no magic pill in saying or no magic formula I should say for if you follow up with someone in X amount of time they are going to be ready to talk to you at that time. But I'd say a good rule of thumb is no more than 30 days out. So even if I set say yeah I'll check in with you in June I'm still gonna call that person next month and just check in and it doesn't have to be real estate minded. It can just be like, hey, Carrie Ann, I saw this today, um, this new house listed in this area I know you're interested in. So I wanted to send it out to you just to get your thoughts so you could see what was out there. Or it could be, I know that you were looking for um, some work to be done on your house before you list. Um, I just worked with this great contractor and they did amazing work. Here's their contact information. It could even be, I know your kids are in this school district and there's this really great event going on. We'll be there with my family. I hope to see you there. As long as we're staying in touch with someone, we, we really cut down on those times where we have that heartbreaking thing happen where we called on the date we said we would, but they've made a different decision. So I never wanna wait more than 30 days to follow up with someone. And that's gonna be if I have set you know, a real follow-up for them 
like three or four months down the line, I'm still going to check in with them more frequently than that with a phone call, with a text, with an email, anything to keep my name in front of them. Because it could just be that they had a lot of people calling them at that time. And, um, you know, they kind of got lost in the shuffle. Um, and they're like, well, I can't really remember who I've talked to. So it's really heartbreaking, I know, to have a great conversation with that lead and think that something's going to come from it and have, you know, someone else set that appointment or take that listing or, you know, take them out in the car to see homes. Um, it's all about making sure that you're following up really um, um, really frequently because, again, you know, we can get lost in the shuffle. So let's talk really quickly about some of these others on here. So here's a question that I think will lead us into setting appointments. So Bethany asked, what are your thoughts on getting buyers pre-approved before you start showing them properties? How do you address that? So when we're starting to set appointments with people and especially getting them pre-approved, I think knowing that someone is pre-approved shows us that they are serious. So if someone is not willing to get pre-approved, it means that their motivation is probably not very high. So when I were talking about motivation, we want to know that someone has the real push or kind of impetus to get out of their current situation and into a new house. So when we're finding out, um, you know, do you have any reason really to get out of your current house and into something else? I'll give you an example. Um, for me, I'm currently um, living in a house that belongs to my family. Um, after a relative passed away, there was no one to um, live in the house. It needed some work done before it was ready to rent or sell. So I moved in. I'm slowly kind of fixing it up until it's ready, until I'm ready to buy something. Um, I've got a really good situation because there's no rent or mortgage and this is a really niche situation, but I'm just trying to <laughs> illustrate my point here. You never know what someone's current situation is. Maybe they don't have a real reason that they need to be out of their house like me. I know that I don't have to sell until I find the exact perfect property for myself. So if someone was trying to figure out my motivation, they might see that I'm not really that motivated because I have the time and the ability to be a little bit more picky. I have been pre-approved just because I work in the industry and I was curious to see how much um, I could be pre-approved for, but you may have some people that aren't willing. So you have to ask yourself, how many properties am I willing to show someone before they're pre-approved? Again, no magic formula, but for a lot of agents, it's just one. So they wanna kind of see if someone's willing to meet with them. But during that buyer's presentation, hopefully before you're having, before you're out showing them actual homes, you might wanna talk about getting pre-approved. You might wanna have them sign a buyer's agreement. All that does is shows you how serious and how motivated someone really is. Some agents absolutely require that someone's pre-approved and has signed a buyer's you know, agency agreement before they ever show someone a property. Some will show one, some will show three. If you're getting burned a lot by people not showing up, it's probably because you're setting appointments before you understand their motivation. So it's really important to share, or excuse me, find out their motivation, get them in your office, in a coffee shop, wherever it happens to be, get them to sign that buyer's agency agreement. And my kind of gut would be to make sure that they're getting pre-approved before you schedule multiple showings. Because again, it's going to help make sure that you um, have people that are motivated and ready to move when the right thing comes up. Now, another one that I wanted to um, talk about here was um, what other ways to pin them down to a meeting day and time. So still on this appointment kind of track. When we're talking about setting appointments, it's really important to, um, again, know their motivation because this is going to help us um, kind of circle back, let them know, hey, I've heard everything you've said, I understand what you're looking for, and it's time for us to go ahead and meet. So let's say you had found out that someone wanted to be closer to work. So you know that they're looking for a three bedroom house closer to work. Do you think that's a true motivation just to be closer to work? It's really not because we don't know how far they currently are from work. We don't know their ideal commute. 
we don't know kind of what pressure it puts on them to be in the car. So if I hear someone say, I want to be closer to work, I ask some follow-up questions. I say, okay, completely understand that. How far are you away right now? And they may say, well, I drive an hour, you know, there and an hour back. Wow, so that's at least 10 hours in the car each week. That's crazy. And they're gonna say, yeah, it's really crazy. Man, if you could be home, you know, for at least half of that time, uh, during the week, get five hours more a week to be at home. What would you do with that time? And they're going to say, I'd play with my kids more. I'd cook dinner more. I'd work out. I'd join a club, <laughs> whatever it may be. Oh man, that would be so great if you were able to do that. So now we have a little bit more of their motivation. Their motivation is not to be closer to work. Their motivation is to have more time at home so they can play with their kids, cook dinner, work out, join a club, whatever it may be. So we have to dig a little bit deeper. So when it's time to set that appointment, we can say, all right, Kayla, it's been so great talking to you today. I really understand you wanting to be at home more so you can you know, actually cook dinner with your husband on a more frequent basis. I know how hard it can be to be away from home so much. So I'd love to get out and find you that perfect home and your price point that's going to allow you to spend that extra time with your family. Would you agree that if I could find you that home that'll give you that extra time um, with your family that you might even be ready to move a little sooner than in the next six months? Or you might just say, if I could find you that you know, home with a huge backyard, like you talked about, that gets you that extra time at home, would you be willing to meet with me a little sooner? Most people are going to say yes, because what we know is that psychologically we're telling that person, hey, I heard you, I understand what you're looking for, and I want to be that person to help you look. Um, so when people hear that, they are just going to say like, yeah, I would be willing to meet with you, because we know their motivation more than I want to be closer to work. So at that point, when we've been able now to recap what they're looking for and their motivation and be a little emotional with it, right? If I could get you those five extra hours at home to play with your kids more, would you be willing to meet with me? Yes. Awesome. I've got availability this week in the evenings and this afternoon during the day. Which one of those is better for you? You can even say, I've got an appointment tomorrow at 6.30 or, you know, Thursday at 2.30. Which one of those is better for you? And we're not asking, when are you available to meet? But we're actually giving them some times. And they may say, neither of those work. Okay, awesome. What is better for you this week then? That's okay. But we want to first throw out a couple options. A, B questions. Is tomorrow at noon better or is Wednesday at 4 p.m. better? Oh, neither of those really work for me this week. Okay, what's good for you? I could meet this weekend as well. And we throw that out. I guarantee you that if you practice on finding the why, the motivation for people, if you focus on that, you will set more appointments because you're now going to understand better than almost any other agent calling them. Um, you're going to understand their motivation better and they're going to feel that. Tiffany just um, added something really great. We ask if they would like to meet for coffee, our treat to, free, to receive a free buyer's book and go over the buying process so they know exactly what to expect. I love that, Tiffany. That's awesome. I love that too, letting them know, would you like, you know, would you be willing to meet with me to map out the buying process? I really like that, um, that kind of line. So, you know, if I could find you that home with the big backyard, like we discussed, that gets you home those five more hours a week to spend with your family, would you be willing to meet with me a little sooner to go over the buying process? That's a great line. So, Tiffany, thank you so much for sharing that. And I love um, saying if they want to meet for coffee on, you know, their treat to receive that free buyer's book and go over the buying process. I love that so much. So, thank you for sharing. Now, I do have someone who um, asked a question about that meeting. I'm just going to scroll up really quick to find that. Okay, so Carrie Ann mentioned um, getting a meeting scheduled. Most people don't think they are quote unquote ready to meet. I try to put them at ease by saying most people start looking 18 months before a purchase. I love that. Some people say, oh, well, I'm not going to move for another year. And they think it's too soon to meet with an agent because they think, 
oh, I'm not serious so far. So I think it's really great if someone does throw out that objection, oh, well, we're not gonna move anytime soon. First of all, asking, okay, well, what is your time frame to move? So you can understand what a while <laughs> means to them because it can mean different things to different people. And then if they say a year, you know, you're actually at the perfect place to start working with an agent. Most people that I work with um, start looking a year out um, and start working with me a year out so we can really, you know, be ready when your time comes. If it's 18 months, it's just plugging in 18 months. If it's two years, that's fine. But we're reassuring them that we um, work with people in their situation all the time and they're actually at a perfect place to start meeting. And if you guys are following up the way that you should be, then you're going to be in touch with that person every 30 days or so throughout whatever that time frame is. So when it does come time for them to quote unquote, make a decision or be ready, you've done the work to get them to remember your name and know um, that you've got their back looking for that home. Now, Gina actually asked before we get into our role play, um, after making several calls with no answer, what should we leave in our voicemail? So that lets me know that Gina is using our no um, voicemail on the first few calls rule, <laughs> which may be new to some of you. Um, we actually prefer not to leave voicemails because we are then doing two things. We are, when we do leave a voicemail, we are giving the lead all the power and we're sitting back and we're waiting for them to call us back. We want to be the ones that keep the ball in our court at all times, so we don't want to leave a voicemail and let the lead now be in control of the situation. We also don't want to give them our name and our phone number right away because then they're going to reject, reject, reject our phone call over and over until it's good for them when we know that we need to talk with them as soon as possible so we start building that relationship with them. So what we want to do is just get that voicemail the first time, hang up, leave a note that we attempted to call, try them again later that day, try them the next day until we get them. But at a certain point, right, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, <laughs> expecting a different result. So we do eventually at one point want to start leaving a voicemail. So um, for voicemails, we um, can say one of two things. Uh, I never want to leave a voicemail that says, let me know if I can help you, because that's not a question wanting the lead to, um, or kind of giving the lead a reason to get back in touch with you. So I want to do one of two things. I'd say I know the lead is looking in the Atlanta area, to use my example from earlier. I would say something like, hi, this is Kayla from the Atlanta Home Search site. I saw that you were looking at homes in Atlanta, and we just had a beautiful listing come on the market I think you'd really enjoy. How would you like me to get that to you? Either text or email. Um, just give me a call back. Here's my phone number. And then we've actually then kind of dangled a little carrot in front of them um, just to see um, if they'll kind of give us a ring back. The other one is a little... Um, I'd say it's going out on a limb, but John Marone, our conversion expert here at Sync, swears by this one. And it's this. Hey, Kayla, it's John with the Atlanta Home Search site. You know, on average, it takes 16 times for someone to pick up the phone when, you know, someone's trying to get a hold of them. So let's just cut out those, you know, 12 additional tries and give me a call back. <laughs> Here's my number. Uh, I've got some great homes that I think you'll be interested in. Gina says that she used John's at work. <laughs> so again, it's all in your tonality. If you sound light and playful with it, um, it's kind of funny and it will kind of cut down on that barrier that some people feel in returning a phone call to a stranger um, and they'll give you a call back. So if you've called them six times, let's just cut out those next 10 and why don't you give me a call back? I'd love to connect with you. I've got some great homes I think you'll love. And then make sure you're always leaving your phone number um, give them that call to action. Give me a call. Here's my number. I'm looking forward to talking to you. So those are my two kind of tips. So thanks to John um, for sharing that one and Gina <laughs> for telling me that she's used it. Now Tiffany asked, what about speed to lead? If we use this, don't they know who you are right away? Um, speed to lead, she's referencing our speed to lead campaign, where it's a series of texts and emails that go out to the lead um, kind of once you move them over to attempted contact, uh, if you're triggering it the way we'd like. Um, go to the help center and search speed to lead if you're curious and knowing more about that. Um, Tiffany, how I kind of get around that is 
your text messages are coming from your sync agent number, whereas your phone calls are probably coming from your cell phone number. So those communications are coming from different things. They may not tie together that it's the same person. Um, I haven't had anyone say that um, they kind of had less phone calls once they started using that speed to lead campaign. So I don't think that that is uh, kind of a, an issue that's been coming up. And if you use sync agent number for both, so you must be using the dialer then to make your phone calls, it's absolutely fine. Um, I, again, I haven't heard that there's been any kind of number discrepancy and you know, phone calls that you've been um, successfully having once you use that speech lead campaign. So I think it's probably, they're not paying that as close of attention. And so Gina, yeah, I wanted to follow up um, on your question too. Gina had asked a question earlier about speed to lead and when to trigger it. And yes, we like to trigger it off of attempted contact, especially if you're using the dialer or even just calling from your sync agent app. When you make the calls from your app, it automatically moves the lead over to attempted contact for you. Um, so if you do go in and move them to contacted, it won't fire because you'll have contacted as kind of your turn off for the speed to lead campaign. But if you do move them over to attempt to contact manually or automatically by using the app, it'll fire off um, that speed to lead campaign and there's nothing you have to do manually. Perfect. Now, I also want to throw out, because we got a couple of questions on how to get a higher contact to appointment ratio, and really it's a numbers game. So the more people we call, the more appointments we're going to set. So who is currently time blocking um, their prospecting phone calls? Because I've got two um, times of the day that is best to make those prospecting phone calls. So who's currently time blocking in the morning and in the afternoon? I'm curious to know that. Because our number one time to get leads on the phone is between four and six in the afternoon. And then our second best time is between eight and 10 in the morning. So if you're able to time block an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon, or even better, those two hours in the morning and the two hours in the afternoon, you will find yourself having more contacts. Have a goal too of number of dials you wanna have. Some people track their no's that they get because it's really motivating because we know that we have to get however many no's to get to a yes. If you're curious in that philosophy, highly recommend the Go For No book. Um, it's really short read and it's really interesting. Um, if you're tracking quality conversations or appointment, set your goal and don't stop until you get there. Right. If you're calling a little um, later in the day to get to your goal, that's awesome. Um, that's my number one suggestion for if you're trying to set more appointments, um, make sure that you're time blocking in the morning and in the afternoon, working your P filters uh, just to prospect with everybody. Now, getting a meeting scheduled was another one, and we've thrown out some good tips up till now, but I'll um, add my last one, and that is making sure that you are sending the lead a um, calendar invitation on or onto whatever calendar they like to use. So whether you get their email address and it's Gmail, they have an Outlook calendar, just send them an invitation by putting something on your calendar and inviting them to it. Um, make sure that they accept it. If you can get them to do it while you're on the phone, even better. So just, hey, Kayla, I'm wondering, do you work off of a calendar? Yeah, I do. I use my Gmail calendar. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and send you an invitation. Um, will you just go ahead and accept it so I know that we're, um, you know, both on board for that date? So you can wait for them to go ahead and accept it. If you see the next day that they haven't still accepted it, I would just shoot them a quick text. Hey, did you receive my calendar invitation? I want to make sure we're... Um, you know, both um, on board for that date. Then the day before, two days before, whatever it may be, three days, again, whatever works for you. Um, I also want you to send them a text to not confirm the appointment, but to remind them of the appointment. So when we say confirm, something in our brain tells us, oh, this wasn't set in stone. It's easier for me now to duck it and not show up. But when we hear remind, okay, 
this person's reminding me of this time we set up together and it makes it a little harder uh, psychologically for us to duck that um, appointment. So when you send them a text or an email, whichever they prefer, um, say that you are reminding them of that appointment and that you're looking forward to seeing them. So those are my two best tips um, for that. Now we do have um, about 15 minutes left together. So I did have Teddy who was interested in doing some role play. So Teddy, I'm gonna pull up my participants list here and get you off of mute so we can do some role play. Give me one moment. Okay, Teddy, can you say something so I can make sure we can hear you? Yeah, can you hear me? Oop, give me one second. My volume was turned way down. Can you say that one more time? Yeah, can you hear me? Awesome, I can now. Awesome, awesome. Perfect, so Teddy, where are you from? Uh, South Florida, I'm in the Palm Beach County area. Okay, so when you get kind of your very typical um, buyer um, on the phone, what? tell me a little bit about what your kind of typical buyer looks for so I can stay on track when I'm playing a buyer. <laughs> yeah, so over here, a typical buyer, um, <laughs> A lot of times they are looking for a condo on the beach. Um, a lot of these buyers are from up north and they're coming down here looking for a part-time home. Okay. Um, that is the majority of the buyers. Um, and so they're looking for a condo on the beach between anywhere from 300 to, to 600. It's kind okay. of a, a good range that a lot of the buyers are looking in. Um, so that's kind of, uh, kind of what they're looking for. Perfect. I always ask after I did a role play session with a team in Alaska and I told them I was looking for something modern and they were like, there's nothing modern here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Modern is modern is the, is kind of the, the main thing here. But I mean, a lot of places, a lot of places are a little older and yeah. they, have been, they haven't been remodeled yet. So awesome. Well, but, I was yeah, trying not people... to be stereotypical and say cabin, but apparently that's truly what they have in their area. So <laughs> I always really ask fun. now. <laughs> All fun. right. So guys, you're going to be able to learn a lot from listening to Teddy's um, role play here. So if he has a line that you really love, um, that you kind of want to put into practice, take a note. Um, you guys can definitely learn uh, just from hearing other role plays. So Teddy, thank you for volunteering. Um, I appreciate it. And yep. whenever you are ready to go, just give me a, a ring, ring, ring. So I know you're ready. I'll say hello. And then you can dive into your opening line and we'll go from there. Awesome. All right. All right. Give me a second. Yeah. All right. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, this is Ted with the uh, the home church site over here in the Palm Beach area. I saw that you were looking on our at homes on our uh, site and just wanted to see if you're looking to move the next three to six months or are, were you just browsing? I'm just looking at the moment. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Um, so what's, what's brought you to, uh, to want to look at homes today? Uh, well, I actually am just kind of doing some research to see if there's anything on the market I like. Oh, great. And what are you seeing that you like so far? Um, I really like things that are kind of like downtown near, you know, like a lot of nightlife. Oh, great. Have you, uh, have you considered, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry. Apologize, I had a call coming around. Did that. That's okay. um, <laughs> um, rewind. So, so awesome. So you're looking to be to be closer to where there's a lot going on. There's a lot of people around, and that's awesome. I like that stuff too. So, oh, are you uh, are you from uh, are you in in the area? Or are you guys coming from out of state? Uh, I'm coming from out of state. I'm looking for um, a place with my parents to do um, kind of summers and possibly rent. Oh, cool. So a goal of yours is to rent it out. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That, that's a, that's a big, um, a big plus, especially if you're going to be here part time to be able to rent out your home while you're not here. So mm -hmm. that's a great idea. So, um, all right. So this is um, what I, what I just, just to 
take a time out real quick. Something yeah. that I have not done before is, and I really like, is to not consider them contacted until you have the what, when, and why. Uh -huh. So, um, so I'm just trying right now, just trying to see like where I can. Yeah. Practically Here's some of my questions. favorite questions, and this is great because this is where I, you're not alone and kind of struggling when we get to this point is knowing what to ask next. So having that framework of the what, the when, the why is helpful. So we already kind of know that this is someone looking for a condo. Um, they want to be near some nightlife. We know that they want to rent it out. So we kind of already know a little bit of the why, um, the why of that they want this rental property, they want a vacation spot. So now let's kind of focus on the other ones for a second. Okay. So something maybe like, you know, Kayla, just curious, what's your time frame for, you know, being, you know, closed in this new condo? Or, you know, what's your time frame for finding something? Um, and then we kind of knock out our win, right? And then you're like, okay, so no rush. That's awesome. I work with people, you know, usually for a year or more finding the perfect place. Um, tell me, um, you know, when you're in the area, what do you like to do? You can even ask them building rapport with them. Um, you know, when you kind of think about having this rental property and you think about, you know, the condo or, or wherever you end up, what's it look like? Um, you can kind of ask those broad open-ended questions that gives you more to work with. Um, cause right now we know again, a little bit, but pick up if you will, um, just, you know, kind of asking me what my time frame is and then moving into some of those other questions. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, uh, what was your name again? I forgot. Kayla. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, so Kayla, if, um, if you mind me asking, so what would be your time frame in, uh, in getting it, getting this, um, this deal, um, taken care of? Um, I, we don't really have a time frame in mind, but we'd love to be in something you know, in before the next winter comes up <laughs> uh, here in Detroit. Absolutely. So basically, if you if we were to, you know, what we're going to end up doing is just uh, at, the, at the end of the conversation, we're going to be sending you guys properties. And if we were to find you the right property tomorrow, would you guys, is it, would it be something you guys would be interested in um, and taking a look at and even uh, and even moving on if it was a perfect property? Um, maybe not tomorrow, but we also don't want to, you know, miss out on something great. Okay. Awesome. Just want to kind of just get a better idea where you're at with that. So, mm -hmm. um, cause we are going to be sending you properties and some of them might even be off market. So, um, if we were to come across the perfect one for you, I just want to make sure that we would be able to, um, um to take care of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so as far as the, uh, the area goes, um, so what are some what are some of the reasons you guys chose um, the specific area over um, over going for a little further south? Yeah, we've or, always vacationed in the area ever since I was a kid. Oh, awesome! Yeah, I did too. I just moved here a few years ago from uh, from North Carolina, so I've been coming here many many years, and I've de finally decided to make the move. So I'm that's awesome. That yeah. So um, so when you guys do decide to move, um. I'm sorry. I guess I know there's 20 something people on the other end of this. I, guess <laughs> I know. I know. It makes it pretty nerve wracking. You're doing a great job. I'll tell yeah. you what you're doing so well at right now. You have a really great conversational tone. So even if you're nervous, you can't tell. <laughs> um, so you sound super friendly. And Gina just chimed in the chat and said, you're killing it. So you're doing great. <laughs> um, it is super hard when you know there's a bunch of people. Listening, I, but you I know. Yeah. It is, it is super hard knowing there's other people there. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so um, so what, when, why? Yeah. So, so I'd say this. You haven't asked me really right now exactly what we're looking for um, in our ideal condo. So I yeah. sometimes hesitate and to use the words like perfect home because we don't want to put it in their heads that we're going to find something, you know, that absolutely – it's perfect in every way. But you know, when you're thinking about like the ideal condo for you guys to be in, what's it look like? Um, and then I can tell you if we need a certain number of bedrooms, bathrooms, I mentioned that I'm going to be buying this with my parents. So I probably want something that's got, you know, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, at least for some privacy. You don't really know yet. Um, I love that you didn't lead with that because it's not the most important thing, but that is something that you can kind of yeah. circle back to as you start to yeah. kind of look for that next question. I usually, yeah, I, I usually do. I got, I've just gotten so flustered. I, I, I've never, this is the first time I've done this. So I'm trying to 
You're doing my- awesome. The fact that you um, just raised your hand, you're the only person who said you wanted to. So I love it very much. Um, yeah. you're great. Um, all right. So, so I'll move, I can move into that real quick and just, yeah. we can, all just right. Practice there a little bit. All right. So, uh, so Kayla, tell me a little bit about what you imagine when you think of your ideal condo. Yeah, we really want something that's got an ocean view. Doesn't have to be beachfront, but we want to be able to see it. Um, yeah, you know, and being as close to you know some cooler restaurants and stuff to do as possible. Um, like I mentioned, I'll be owning it with my parents, so we'd love something with a bathroom for both of us. Um, you know, just kind of going from there. Okay, so um, would you prefer a two bedroom since it's going to be you and your parents, or would you want uh, more than that? Um, if we could get three, we could, but at least two. Okay. Okay. Great. And, um, and what would be your ideal price range as far as that goes? Cause that would kind of determine a lot of the other things that you guys would be, um, looking for in that condo. Yeah. And what I've seen, I we're thinking maybe somewhere between four fifty or five. Okay, great. Yeah. That's definitely doable. You should be able to, we should be able to find, um, um, a three bedroom. But if, if we absolutely could not, would you guys be um, be okay with a two-bedroom? Yeah. A two-bedroom yeah. bath? Okay, great. Just want to make sure because I, I believe we can find a three-bedroom, but it's in the scenario that there's none available. I just want to make sure that you guys would be um, okay. Yeah, with more that. important to us is getting something that's just spacious and has the ocean. Sure. Okay. So like an open floor plan, something that has plenty of just space for you and the family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. And... And what about HOA? Are you, are you familiar with the um, Homeowners Association? Do you, do you know really. about that? Okay, so basically Homeowners Association is just the, uh, the groundskeeping and the amenities and all that stuff. So it often comes with a monthly amount anywhere from 200 a month to it can go up to 600 a month. But it, a pretty normal amount is two or 300 a month that you can uh, be paying to just to have the amenities that offers that the condo offers. Mm-hmm. So is that something that you guys are familiar with? Um, I personally am not, I've never owned before, but, um, I'm sure as long as we can work it into our, you know, our budget, yeah. we'll be fine with Absolutely. that. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just throw it when we, when I send you guys some properties, I'll send you stuff that has, um, an HOA of 300 or less, just so you can get an idea. Okay. And, um, as we're, as we're searching through these piece properties together, we'll be able to see, um, see what's, uh, um, what works for you guys. Are you going to be in the area sometime in the near future? So um, just want to get an idea if there's a time that you, we would be able to possibly uh, uh, meet you guys and to go over some properties. Yeah, we don't have a trip planned until June. Okay, awesome. So here's what we'll do in the meantime. Um, so in the meantime, since I have these details of what you guys are looking for, me and my team are going to get together and we're going to um, put together um, a great list of properties. And we're going to start sending you guys, guys homes for you to take a look at. What I'll do is I'll just follow up with you um, uh, about these, these emails and make sure that you guys are getting them and make sure that we see what you guys are liking. Because by the time you get here in June, we'd love to have a list of properties ready to go for you. And by that time, we'll know exactly what you're looking for. Okay. So um, the, lastly, I just want to know, are you guys going to be selling a home first to do this? Or is this something that you guys are going to be doing um, aside from any other, any other contingency. Yeah. We're not selling anything first. This will just be our vacation home. Okay. Awesome. That makes things go, go really smoothly and it will be a cash deal. You guys going to be getting some financing. Um, financing. Awesome. Do you guys, um, um, have a lender in order or would you like to speak with somebody that we have on our team that helps all of our, all of our clients? Uh, I think we have someone, but thanks for the offer. Absolutely. No problem. Um, so here's what I'll do is, um, if you could, um, over the next few months, just, just, uh, just be working together with us to make sure that we help you guys narrow down your search and and find what you're looking for. And a month before you guys get up here, we'll just get that pre-approval letter from you guys, from your lender. And, uh, and we'll just be sure that we are um, able to set up some appointments for you guys and we'll make sure we see, we find you some, some good properties to look at. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Kayla. I'm going to send you an email over um, today with some properties and then we'll just follow up with you every other week or so and, and we'll be in touch. Okay. All right. Sounds good, Ted. Thank you. 
All right, Kayla. Thank you so much. Have a good day. We'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Ted, that was awesome. You did a great job. Uh, like I said, you kind of found yourself in the mud in the same place that a lot of other agents do. So what I'm going to do is for anyone who wants my list of my top 10 favorite keep the conversation questions <laughs> to keep the conversation moving, if you want my list of those questions, I just want you to shoot me an email um, and I'll send you the recording of today's call and um, that list. It's not saying that you have to ask them on every single uh, call, but if you're finding yourself stuck, it will help you um, kind of move that conversation along. You asked a lot of really good ones though, and I kind of was taking notes. So, so I'll tell you exactly um, what I have here. So I love that you, um, first of all, just that you mentioned that you moved to the area from North Carolina a few years ago. I think that's a really good um, kind of anecdote you can share with people who are moving from out of town. Hey, I completely understand the process of finding a place here in, you know, whatever city they're looking in. I moved here myself a few years ago and, you know, I love helping people, um, you know, kind of find their spot here in, you know, Southern Florida, wherever you happen to be. I think that's really great. It puts people at ease that you kind of understand the process. Um, I loved that you, you know, were asking about price point. Um, that you kind of educated me about the HOA and that you were going to send me something, you know, within a certain range that I'd be comfortable with. Um, I love that you asked me about cash or finance and you always lead with cash because we want people to feel good thinking that we believe that they could pay cash for that, you know, second home. Um, so that's a really great question. Um, I think, again, I already told you you had a really awesome conversational tone. Um, so I think if you can just role play and get used to those questions of keeping the conversation going, um, you'll just be absolutely killing it in no time. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, guys, I just put my email address in the chat, but it's just my name, Kayla.Priest at SyncPro.com. Um, that's Kayla with a C, so I'm just going to spell it for everybody, C-A-Y-L-A dot Priest, P-R-I-E-S-T at syncpro.com, you'll also see it in my um, or in the chat because I just put it there. If you want those questions and a copy of the webinar, just email me, kayla.priest at syncpro.com and just put conversion webinar or something similar in the subject line. So I'll know to send you those questions. Um, again, we are off next week um, because this is an every other week webinar, but we'll be on the week after same time. You will hear that week from my colleague, John Marone. He hosts our conversion day, hosts his own podcast, does keynote speaking. He's really great, brings awesome um, energy to the call. So I highly recommend that you join that one as well. Um, here comes my email address. One more time, Kayla.Priest at SyncPro.com. Send me an email. I will send you the recording when it's complete. So it may take 30 minutes or so for me to respond. Um, and then also um, send those, you know, kind of questions to keep the conversation moving. Awesome. And Jane, Gina, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. Um, and not just to Gina, to everyone. Thank you very much for joining me today. I really enjoy doing these with you guys. Um, I think it's so important to role play. So if I could leave you with a couple of things, um, role play every week, whether it's with someone in your team, um, someone in your office, um, an agent from another area, or even someone that's not an agent, just a friend or family member. It's really important just to keep practicing, right? Um, you know, athletes, practice every day. You guys want to be just as good at your craft as they are. So you have to practice as well. So doing a role play once a week, or even just to start your call blocks off every day will really keep you at the top of your game. Um, so I really recommend that you guys do that. Continue to join these webinars as well, because you'll always have some little takeaways each time. Um, if you guys are also looking for other um, information about other training, I'm going to put our Sync Community website in the chat. It's just syncommunity.com. All of our training sessions are on there so you can register, see what's upcoming. Um, if you have any questions about that, there's also a questions tab on there. So we'd love to get your questions answered. Um, the very last thing, it's a note that I wrote down here for Ted's call that I forgot to share. Um, 
This is for Tad and anyone else who um, works with people that are coming from out of town. Um, not being afraid to schedule an appointment with them to do a FaceTime or a Zoom meeting um, where you start that face-to-face -face connection before they even make it into town. So something like, hey Kayla, I know you guys aren't going to be here until June, um, but I'd love to set up a FaceTime or um, a screen share meeting just so we can start to map out that process for you and get to know each other before you're here in June. You know, I'm free this afternoon or tomorrow morning which one's better for you. Um, that will help you build rapport so much faster than waiting for them to get into town a couple months later um, and really kind of solidify that, building that relationship, which is what this is all about, right? Setting the appointment is great. Finding their motivation is great, but it's all because we're trying to build this bigger relationship with them. So when they are ready to buy, we are there. We've done the work to get to know them. They know us and they're comfortable um, kind of going through this very vulnerable, kind of sometimes scary process for some people with us. Um, so I really hope that you can take everything that we learned today, put it into play right away and give us some, you know, good feedback on what's working and what's not working um, when we meet up two weeks from now. So again, thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day and I hope to see you guys on another webinar soon. Bye-bye.